Now, CNN's Anderson Cooper on assignment for 60 Minutes. For years, educators have tried and failed to get poor kids from the inner city to do just as well in school as kids from America's more affluent suburbs. Black kids still routinely score well below white kids on national standardized tests. But a man named Jeffrey Canada may have figured out a way to close that racial achievement gap. What he's doing has been called one of the most ambitious social experiments to alleviate poverty of our lifetime. His laboratory is a 97-block neighborhood in Harlem, which he's flooded with a wide array of social, medical, and educational services available for free to the 10,000 children who live there. It's called the Harlem Children's Zone. Ed Bradley first reported on Jeffrey Canada three and a half years ago, but back then there was no way to tell if his children's zone was working. Today, however, results are in, and they're nothing short of stunning, so much so that the White House is now taking notice. For Jeffrey Canada, however, it's just a start. You grow up in America and you're told from day one, this is the land of opportunity, that everybody has an equal chance to make it in this country. And then you look at places like Harlem and you say that is absolutely a lie. So you're trying to level the playing field between kids here in Harlem and what, middle class kids in a suburb? Th that's exactly what we think we have to do. Uh, you know, if you grow up in a community uh, where uh, your schools are inferior, where the sounds of gunshots are a common thing, uh, where you spend your time and energy not thinking about algebra or geometry, but about how not to get beat up or not to get shot or not to get raped. When you grow up like that, uh, you don't have the same opportunity as other children growing up. And we're trying to change those odds. He's trying to change those odds on a scale never before attempted. His goal, to break the cycle of poverty in an entire neighborhood by making sure all the kids who live there go to college. That's what it's all about. You really believe that's possible to break I that absolutely cycle? absolutely know we're going to do it. Canada remembers well what it was like to be a kid in the inner city. We couldn't afford... He grew up not far from Harlem in another tough New York neighborhood, the South Bronx. Abandoned by his father, he and his three brothers were raised by their mother, who was barely able to get by. When I first found out that Superman wasn't real, I was about maybe eight, and I was talking to my mother about it, and she was like, no, 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 there's no Superman. And I started crying. And she, the chaos, the violence, the danger. No hero was coming. Canada got lucky, however. As a teenager, his grandparents moved to the suburbs, and he went with them. He got into Bowdoin College and then the Harvard School of Education. Good morning, boys and girls. He's been working with kids in Harlem virtually ever since. To do it, Jeffrey Canada decided to build his own school in the Harlem Children's Zone. Right now, there are some 1,200 kids enrolled from kindergarten to the 10th grade. It'll eventually expand all the way through the 12th grade. We've created a school to help you all become the smartest boys and girls in the country. It's a charter school, so Canada is able to run it his way free from the bureaucracy and restrictions of the public school system. There's one adult for every six students. Classes are smaller and school days longer. Kids come in on Saturdays and summer vacation, that only lasts three weeks. We will always ask permission before leaving the group. Yeah. Canada's long argued that investing in the Harlem Children's Zone would show a return. And now, for the first time, there's scientific data to prove it. He has done a remarkable job. Dr. Roland Fryer is a professor in the economics department at Harvard. He's conducted the first independent statistical study of Jeffrey Canada's efforts to close the racial achievement gap in his school. What is the racial achievement gap? Black children in our schools are not performing at even close the rate as white children in our schools. So the average black 17-year-old reads at the proficiency level of the average white 13-year-old. Four-year difference in effective reading skills, that's, that's huge. But when Dr. Fryer analyzed four years' worth of Promise Academy test scores, he discovered something remarkable. At the elementary school level, he closed the achievement gap in both subjects, math and reading. Actually uh, eliminating the gap absolutely. in elementary school. Absolutely. We never, say, we never say anything like that. Absolutely eliminating the gap. The gap is gone, and that is absolutely incredible. Last year, according to New York State data, 100% of Canada's third graders scored at or above grade level in math. Good job. Narrowly outperforming their white peers in the city's public schools. 96? Is that the answer? Yes. Even more impressive, Canada's impact on middle schoolers, kids who enrolled in the Promise Academy in the sixth grade. 
They started out far behind grade level, but Dr. Fryer found that within three years they had virtually eliminated the achievement gap in math and reduced it by nearly half in reading. These are kids that a lot of people had given up on, and uh, he showed that it's never too late. How will you know when the Children's Zone has worked? When I see my kids by the thousands with degrees, wow. uh, I will say this is what we set out to do. And we've done it. We've got our kids in the best schools in America. They're going to be successful. They'll be competing with everybody else all over the country. People will be looking for kids from Harlem, saying, oh, those kids are so great from Harlem. We need more kids from Harlem to come in. Then we'll be successful.